welcome back to yet another episode of the I'm Down podcast and YouTube channel. Thank Chatting you guys channel, channel. for watching, tuning in once again. Uh, we're coming back at you guys now with a very, I don't want to say random topic, but I kind of want to say calculated yet random topic in a way. I think it's just honest. Right, just honest topic. Yeah. Um, about opportunity. Opportunity, right? Oportunidad. La palabra del día es oportunidad. That's a thumbnail right there. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. So let me ask you something. What's your what's your view? I guess what's your view when you first see opportunity? What do you think about? Um, the first thing I think about is open door. Mm -hmm. The second thing about it is, I think is perspective. Because open door. What I mean is, uh, oftentimes we see opportunity as something that is obvious, right? Right. Like, if somebody, hey, do you want this job? That's an opportunity. Right. But many times we don't see opportunity as, and that's why a perspective comes from, is an obstacle can be an opportunity. Mm, I like that. Wow. Because an obstacle mm. can be an opportunity to make you better. Yeah, and a lot of us don't really look at obstacles as opportunities. Exactly. That's like the saying I heard a long time ago. Um, I was it was in a movie. I think it's uh the movie about the guy in the boat that it has to do with life God. of Pi. No, not life of Pi. It's um Noah's Ark, but like the re. Oh, Evan, Evan Almighty. Evan Almighty. There we go. That. The guy, I guess God at the time, he goes and tells the wife at one point, he's like, oh, do you think that when you pray for opportunity, do God, does, no, does, when you pray for patience, does God give you patience? Does it give you an opportunity Oof. to be patient, right? I feel like we can apply that in everything. Bam. Right? And I think you just, that's, you right now in that example, explained how I see opportunity. Yeah. At least... Now how I'm trying, if I'm honest, if I'm, how I'm trying mm -hmm. to see opportunity. Because I realized now at this stage of my life, I don't consider myself wise or know-it-all or any of that. Yeah. I think I'm just some young dude trying to figure it out. But I realized that opportunity is always there if we're always willing to take it. For example, sure. when you look at obstacles or opposition... That is opportunity to prove that you can overcome. Got you. Well, that makes sense. Where if yeah. you look at like that the uh, basic open door right yeah. offers and whatnot, that is opportunity that sometimes we have to give up on mm -hmm. because we think that opportunity always means something you have to take, but opportunity is a choice, mm -hmm. and some things may be opportunities that I have to say no to because I believe there's something better to come. Got you. Yeah, which is deep. I like that. Now that makes sense. You know, because at least for me, you know, whenever me and you talk about opportunity, it's more related to like how, I guess how like millennials think. Like, I think about like, a, like an internship, for example, uh -huh. right? You know, I would say like, it was crazy how to, to really think like a lot of people won't take an internship because it won't pay you a lot, right? Like if it's, so it's almost like, us as millennials, we don't take chances on opportunities if it doesn't have a paycheck attached to it, right? Which I always tell you. I think that's a huge mistake because... <laughs> I'm just, I mean, like, I mean, look, I'm just, I, I don't want to interrupt you. Okay. I, I hope you don't lose this thought, right? Uh -huh. But I just thought about this thing I saw on Twitter. This is why I love Twitter. <laughs> I, I, don't, I don't know if you, you saw uh, LeBron's interview of the first, the first game of the no, finals. Yeah. Whatever. So people are continuously asking him about the Jarrah Smith fiasco. Gotcha. I saw the play. Right. The play was... Whatever. So people are asking him in the interview. Hmm. And so he just gets up and he walks away. Looks, as he's walking away, looks at every one of those interviewers and says, be better next time. Right? Uh -huh. But people made a meme out of it and said, when somebody asks you, offers you an internship for experience... <laughs> Really? <laughs> be better after? <laughs> be better next time. Like, what next time after me, actual yeah. money. <laughs> what the? I mean, I guess it makes. I guess it. <laughs> I guess it relates. I didn't know that meme. That's on Twitter. I haven't seen it on Instagram at all. That's probably why. Twitter, Twitter, check out. Twitter is the best, to be honest. No, I'm not like Twitter really is good. That's interesting. I haven't seen that. Not because 
Okay, so I guess coming back, right? I guess in a way, like, I don't know. Okay, so me, I took an internship. When I took an internship, I took a pay cut when I took my internship. Yeah. But because I took that internship and the big pay cut at the time, my my income grew two times. You get what I'm saying? Because I took the pay cut. But were you expecting it to grow? No. What, what was your decision in taking that? So for me, it was more like, okay, you know what? This is a new experience. This is a new exposure for me. This is something that I could kind of see where I could dabble and touch onto. So that's why I did it. You know what I mean? Because it was one of those things that was like, okay, like, I guess it makes sense for me to, like, join this intern. Because, uh, okay, so for my internship was, was based on school. You know what I mean? So in school, it was this program for, um, for basically business majors mm -hmm. and IT majors, right? Like people, like, in that biz in that scale of majoring and whatnot. So... I took it thinking, okay, you know, I'm going to get, like, new opportunities. I mean, as far as, you know, what they were telling me, it's like, okay, I'm going to get, you know, exposure to different people, different things as far as the program went. And then when I went to the internship, I could actually go, like, on a, like, big, I guess, like, big company type of internship, not just any internship. So when I was in my internship, I wasn't expecting it. I didn't even know how much people got paid in my position. You know what I mean? I was making, like, uh, 10, 10, 50 an hour, some shit like that, $11 an hour before, so... Uh, once I started finding out, like, yo, these people make damn near double that, it's like, okay, this is, it's kind of, I guess, kind of cool. But you never went in for the money. No, definitely not. I, I had no idea. Remember, it's an internship. I had no idea. Even I mean, as a matter of fact, during that internship time, I was actually not even going to get brought into the company. The only reason I got brought into the company was because of my manager. So, shout out to Vanessa, if you're watching this. Hey, Vanessa, and, I respect you because he pays for half of my stuff. <laughs> Vanessa Thomas, you already know, man, I got all the love for you. You know, so shout out to you. And, you know, her, um, she really fought for me. I, felt, I really felt that. Yeah, but she really fought for me to, like, kind of bring me in, too, and uh, bring me in. But, but she saw something that you showed her. Absolutely. And, uh, you know, the, the crazy thing is about that? She saw something in me before anything. She, she spoke to me the first week, and she told me, you know what I see in you? I see you as a VP of a company one day. Yeah. And to be honest with you, for me, I thought at first she was gassing me up. I'm like, I don't, I don't really know what to believe because I don't see myself as I don't see myself as a VP or anything like that. But she's like, but I mean, regardless of whether I'm ever a VP or anything in any company, she saw the, she, she she saw something in me that I would never have seen in myself. So from the get go, you get me. And was I, that like, bef but that, was that from like conversations? I mean, I to be honest, with you, I have no. That was the first week I was there. So for, I think um, I got there on a Monday, obviously. I, I believe it was June 12th. Oh, of 2017. A year. Yeah, it was a year ago. Over a year ago, which was last year, June 12th. No, we haven't visited over a year ago yet. Hmm? What do you mean? It isn't no, no, I'm sorry, not June. I'm sorry, yeah. You're actually January. My bad. That's what I meant to say. I got there January 12th, and this was over a year ago. And. We probably had that mean like the first week, I believe. You get me? I'm not saying I think like a Wednesday, like kind of like to talk about expectations and what what she expected of me. You mm -hmm. get me? Like what I wanted to do. So she told me that you know you coming in here, I kind of so when she was younger, she told me like you know I had a mentor like I when I entered she mentored me like you know the person she um whoever her boss was at the time mentored her and because of that she was better and. And she's like, I kind of want to do the same for you. So she, wow. had, she had an impact in my life, honestly, wow. because of that. Yeah. So, I mean, I was still like, you know, um, last time we spoke, we went out to dinner. You know, last time we spoke, which was like a few months ago. And I mean, to me, she's still like an awesome person. Yeah, because she, she didn't just like, she didn't seem just like, okay, you're just another employee, cool, whatever. You know what I mean, when you, when your time is up after six months, you're gonna be out of here, so whatever. You know what I mean? we're gonna find out. No, like, she really saw something in me. She really fought for me. She really, you know what I mean? So she added value to my life. You know what I mean? She showed me what a manager is supposed to do. She showed me what somebody who really, exactly, what it, you couldn't have said it any better, what a leader is supposed to do. And that, to me, impacted me in a way that was amazing to me. I was like, and, and, and all of this, you get me? Now, like, I mean, we go backtrack now. I've been in this company for over a year now, since, since from January to June, like a year and a half now, you get me? Um, I've gotten a promotion and a raise since then, you get me? Since being in the company, I, I was a temp, right? So a temporary employee, that's what they call temps. I finished my thing in the end of July. I was a temp, no, I'm sorry, the end of June. I was a temp in July. By the time November came around, I was a full employee. 
with you know like a new position <laughs> and everything, a pay raise and all. And yeah, I'm a full blown out like new position, new thing. And yeah. and because I took the only reason why I'm in that place is because I took the opportunity, because I took the pay the gamble. Up. Exactly. That's all it was, is a gamble. Because in reality, during those so the program during those six months, I was thinking I even took an extra class I wasn't even supposed to take. Wow. Yeah. So. Technically speaking, I paid an extra three hundred, four hundred dollars for a class that wasn't even in my plan in my track. So it's just an extra credit class. You get me? Mm -hmm. That I paid real money for. You get me? So in reality, yeah, it was a gamble, basically. You know, you know what I I just thought about, which is crazy, and I guess I've never seen it like this until you said the story. Was she your opportunity? I think you know what I like that. I don't think she was my opportunity. I think she opened doors for me to have opportunity. Though. But no, but I I mean in the sense of, you know, you said something that's beautiful. Is she saw something in you yeah. that you hadn't seen in yourself? Yeah, definitely. She gave okay. you the opportunity. I get what you're saying. Of progress and perspective. Gotcha. Then you know what? In that case, absolutely. Because you know what? Even even in that situation, and you know what? Yes, I rephrase it. Absolutely, she was my opportunity, and I'll tell you why. Um, w during my internship, I had to, uh, I had to do a presentation in front of a VP. He was the vice president of like, he's actually the chief officer of a county or something. Oh, yeah, I had to do a presentation in front of him. Big dog. During this time, yo, we had meetings. I don't want to say every day, but almost every day. I'm talking about daily meetings. Like we took time out of our own job, out of our own daily tasks. To do this, to look back at the presentation I was making, she looked at it. She's like, you know what? I think you could do this better. I think you could do this better. She was really on top of it. Like I'm talking about, like her and my supervisor Noka. Shout out to Noka. I don't think Noka watches this at all, but if she does. <laughs> shout out to you, Noka. Um, sh her and Noka would take time to come and really sit down with me and talk about the presentation, what I could do better, what how I could fix it. So. You know, I suck at PowerPoints. Like, and not that I can't do them. I hate that that part of creativity. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like I have to, to make. Confine? Yeah, yeah. It's like I hate that, dude. I, I don't know why. I just don't like it. It's like I rather just talk. You get me? So when I'm confined to like, I guess like a, a PowerPoint. And at the time, I didn't really have that much experience at all. You get me? So I guess when I'm confined to a PowerPoint, it's like ah, like I don't really know what to do with it. So we sat down all these times and really spoke about how we can make this better. How we could, I don't know, you know, a, a lot of things about, you know, like, like, I think this sentence could be better. You know, little details. I think the picture could be better. I think, you know, you should pick, you know what I mean? So, it was a constantly revision, revision, revision. We did this from, I don't want to say, well, yeah, probably for months. We did this for a little mm -hmm. while. Until I actually got to present. Um, During the presentation, I think I could have done better. But the feedback I got was good. You yeah. know, the feedback, I gave us like, oh, he did great. And yeah. I guess, you know, they really liked it, so it was cool. But she absolutely helped me every single step of the way. Even to the position that I'm in now, it was because of her. Like the position that I'm in right now, to date, because of full time, is because of her. It wasn't for I would not wow. have this position. Yeah, literally. She was the one who told me, yo, I think you should apply to this. They have an open position. I put in the work for you. Like it's, So basically, where I'm at today is because of her. I could say that. Yeah, I mean, as far as human being goes, yeah. like not God and you know, yeah, the yeah, blessings, yeah. but as far as human being goes, is absolutely 100%. Wow. Right. Like, she wow. guided me, she mentored me throughout the whole entire way. And she's one of the realest persons I've met to this very day. Like, she will tell you what's on her mind at all times. And that's how she was as a manager. Like, as a manager, she'll be mad. Some people will be mad at her because the way she felt, you knew how she felt. Like, if she was pissed off, you knew she was pissed off. You get what I'm saying? So, well, I mean, you know, it was, wow. wow. Like, I'm, I'm mind blown in the sense of, like, uh, maybe you guys don't know, but I've heard this story. But I, I just came to this realization right now. And it's that if you don't take that gamble, you don't meet this person. Mm -hmm. And this person shaped you in a way that you and I probably can't explain that story. Never. Absolutely. You know? And, and I think that, for you guys out there, is what capitalizes and pictures the idea of opportunity. Absolutely. Opportunity is embracing whatever challenge comes your way and pursuing to the best of your abilities. Because I know you gave me your all. Like, I, we were talking about this way back, way, way back. I remember you telling me about, yo, I was starting this internship, and, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know what's going to happen. Remember when Melrose yeah, yeah. some hoops, uh -huh. right? Mm -hmm. and, and, you know, I could have I could have not, and I, and I know for sure you couldn't have either, 
envision where you are right now. Absolutely not. But you know, opportunities are not always clear cut. Like you don't know what this door is gonna lead to. Mm-hmm. But many times the door doesn't lead to a thing, it leads to a person. And that person can shape your life in a way that everything after that is a direct result, at least in your life, for example, yeah. of that person who saw in you something and said, no, no, you can do better because I see better in you. Mm-hmm. You know, and, and if you haven't been presented with an opportunity like that, then I encourage you to be that opportunity for mm-hmm. somebody else. Be that person that says, no, 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 no. You're not settling for this to mm-hmm. somebody else. Yep. Because I see something better in you. Sure. And, and I, I, honestly, to this moment, I had never thought of it like that. But so you said that story, and I think like the idea that opportunity doesn't have to be a thing, yeah. a door. It doesn't have to be a job or an offer. It can be a person who sees in you something you don't see yourself. Mm-hmm. And no, you're absolutely right. Um, that, that's what's crazy about like that whole that whole rundown because. For me, during the program, you know, even people in the program, I was, I feel like they had like, you know, their hand in molding me and helping me, you know, become better. But, I mean, what she did was like, she went beyond what her duty is. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. And I think that that's an example that we can all take. And that's an example in opportunity itself to go beyond what we expect. It's a go beyond what we want because and she took the opportunity in you too. Yeah. Because she absolutely. said, you know what, I'm gonna go beyond myself and him. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. And, and it's crazy because you know nowadays we we hear like you know, at the level that we're on now, right? We have bills to pay. We have things to do. I understand that, but you know in reality we always talk about happiness and trying to bridge that gap between you know combining what you mm-hmm. love and you know into a life and whatnot, right? So in reality. What she did could come into practice to be practical, you get me? Because I think about it always. I'm like, wow. So you really went out of your way, took a gamble on me to really, you know, whatever it is that, right? And whatever it is that you saw in me. And when you really think about it, when we go out of our own way, right? To try to do something that we don't know if it's going to pan out, we're taking a gamble. And that's the thing that a lot of us don't do. We don't take enough risk because the risk, yeah. you know I mean? They might not benefit you at the end of the day. The problem with that is that when we don't take fear. risk, it's fear. And the problem with that, though, is that when we don't do it, we look back years from now or, or a year from now, whatever, and like, wow. You know, and you know why I say that, bro? Because when I left high school, I regretted, like, you know, once I kind of, like, started growing up, I regretted not doing a lot of things I could have done in high school as far as, like, Maybe dancing more, right? Like, you know, for the people that know me from high school, I danced in ninth grade. Tenth grade, I stopped. Well, I knew you for a while. You've been dancing since for I a, a lo- Exactly, since for a long time. I mean, I stopped doing it, like, as far as, like, you know, just uh, like a like a creative thing. Like, I stopped doing it probably, like, around tenth grade. Like, I, I wish I would have kept going. You get me? Because who knows what it could have, like... I don't want to say who knows what it could have led to, the but... Bodies. Right, who knows? But, I mean, I, I just think to myself, like, wow, I could have, you know, really like dived into a really creative part of me that I never dived into. You get me? A creative part where I never did choreography or something like that, right? It could have been something cool if I would have really dove into it. Yeah. But I was, since I wasn't comfortable with it, it's like, ah, I, I'm cool, I'm cool. You get me? Since I, I just rather step away. So that's kind of what happens now. Like, look, you might like, I don't know, clothes. I don't know, what's something you like? Tell me something you like. Anything, it could be anything. Technology. Food. food, okay, food, right? Let's take food, for example. So... For you, you want to be a chef, let's say, right? And you want to open your own restaurant. So you decide, you know what, I'm going to go to work and I'm going to come home and I'm going to just, guess, whip up some food yeah. myself. But, you know, if you really think about it, if you, you know, you say, you know what, no. I have an opportunity to intern and be around a great chef, right? I, I'm not going to get paid, but I get to be around that influence. You know what, I'm going to take a pay cut. I'm going to go, I'm going to get a part-time job and I'm going to get that job. And that job is going to get it done for me for now. I might struggle a little bit. But I'm going to be around greatness. Mm-hmm. And I'm going to be around this guy who's a big influence as far as, you know, what I want to do. And let's say you do it. And who knows? Maybe from that experience that you get from him, he puts you on. Or maybe you learn so much from him that you're able to build up whatever it is that you want to build up and be as a chef. You might just get the opportunity mm-hmm. simply from just shadowing him and watching what he does. The problem is that we won't do that because we don't want to take a pay cut. You get me? We don't want to get it's almost, exactly, and it's almost like if we take a pay cut, it's like we're going backwards. 
You get me? It's like, look, I'll give you a perfect example. A lot of us are scared, and I put this on the Instagram post not too long ago. A lot of us are scared to take two steps back to go one step forward, right? Well, because because we well, heard it. Exactly. Or no, no. I'm sorry. I think the saying is take one step back to go two steps forward, right? That that that's but, the. But, and I think this is where we got it wrong. It's like just because financially you're sacrificing something doesn't mean you're taking a step back. Because in the in the big picture, you may actually be gaining other things that cannot mm -hmm. be quantified or qualified with money. Right, right. So, you know, it's like, if the same shouldn't be, I took a step back, maybe I took a step to the side. Mm. I took a detour. Yeah, 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 I get you. I did things different. You know, I, like, when I was talking, I was thinking about Virgil and Kanye interview, uh, they're interned. Yeah. You know, for you guys, I know I quote a lot of Kanye, I call a lot of Virgil. I want you guys to understand that these two are some of the biggest creatives in our time. Mm -hmm. Whether you agree with them, disagree with them, whether you like them or not, whether you know them or not, some of the creatives, you know, a lot of what you see, the whole Fear of God brand, the Off-White brand, you know, uh, Kanye graduation and all that, the raps, the 808s and heartbreaks. Mm -hmm. This is things that, that have spread through hip-hop and the subculture yeah. of our time, right? And, and, you know, they took internships. And Kanye, in one of his interviews with Charlamagne the God, mm -hmm. says, you know, we didn't do anything in this interview. But it, they took the gamble saying, you know what, this may give us the platform to go where we want to be. Right. And so they they agree and they accept that they didn't do anything in the internship, but they were willing to take a gamble mm -hmm. by taking this internship. You know, and, and the, the reason we talk about internship is because George has a very personal experience with that. Mm -hmm. But in my, in my idea, the word opportunity, like I, I kept mentioning, is, is a bigger idea. It's an idea of choosing to see every step of your life, every moment you're in, as an opportunity to launch you further. You know, one of those things that I was mentioning to you today earlier was that, you know, they, they offered to me a position on my job. Mm -hmm. You know, I was in a position I was comfortable with, yeah. wasn't one that I was very happy with, but the way I chose to see it was the more I learn, the more I can be like a Swiss tool, right? Gotcha. One that can handle different positions, mm -hmm. different areas, help people out, guide people, teach people, and encourage people. And the more you have those things, the more marketable you become. Yep, yep absolutely right. You know, so oftentimes your opportunity can become, can come to you in disguise, mm -hmm. right? Because it comes to you in a position comes to you as an obstacle, comes to you as difficulty, comes to you as, as a pay cut, mm -hmm. comes to you as a lot of different things. But that doesn't mean, you know, you have the power to make it an opportunity. Right. The way you look at it. You're absolutely right. You know, thinking about that, I remember, I guess, backtracking to my thing, um, I had one word of advice. Um, there was a new guy that came on, he came from IT onto our team. And he, you know, he came to introduce himself. Hey, how are you? You know, what do you do? You know, that's all. I'm an intern. He's like, okay, well, can I get some advice? Of course. He goes, you know, one thing I learned about my internship is that I realized that I had to make them take me. I'm like, what do you mean? He goes, I was so good at what I did. I worked so hard at what I did. Wow. That they had no choice but to take me. I am the guy. I was like, so you made an opportunity. You get what I'm saying? Wow, like wow, wow, wow. That, that is it. And when I heard that, I was like, damn. At first, it sat. You get me? It sat with me. And I realized that throughout my internship, that's who I became. Wow. I, I became that person. I became the person. So what I did during my task at what I did, I became, I, at least as far as what my, my, uh, my co-workers told me, my coworkers that used to do the job I did, they told me I was good at it. I was very good at it. You get me? They told me that I was one of the best at it. You get me? So while I was doing my job, people saw that. You get me? Like my managers, my coworkers, people saw that. Okay, you're good at what you're doing. And it's almost like we have no choice but to take this guy. You are the answer. Exactly. Like you are what we need. You get me? So I think that's very important. It's almost like you create your own opportunity. Wow. You get me? You, and, and that's something that you have to do. You know, when you present yourself to people, right? When you have, when you get the opportunity, like for example, like you can be anywhere, somebody gives you an opportunity, right? They give you an opportunity of a job and you could be a salesperson 
and you can be the regular person. Oh, hey, how are you? You know, mm-hmm. how are you doing? You know, yeah. what can I help you with? Okay, nothing, whatever. You just got to collect the check. Or you can be the service that goes beyond. You know what I mean? It really tries to put in the work and the time to become a Everything, better, yeah. exactly, and better. You know what I mean? And, and you can apply that to whatever you're going through. You know what I mean? Whatever it is that you're going through at the moment, whatever opportunity you may have, make it so that you are the one. You know what I mean? Wow. Yeah. Wow. I don't, I don't know if I can, I can say anything else. I think I think that's that's um that's the idea, right? Yeah. The idea, idea is you know it. like you know we we have this mindset, but I think that's a beautiful conversation. I wanted to mention, but those points fall short to personal experiences, mm-hmm. right? Because your life says more about opportunities than any point I've already thought of or any point that I wanted to say. Right. And, and the same is gonna be with you guys. Is we want to encourage you guys to take a moment. Pause, stop, think, look around you and see how you can make an opportunity out of your situation. You know, we I know we talk to people our age, because we assume people our age are watching, but imagine if you're a mom. Pause, look, and see, how can I take where I am right now to make me a better mother, a better worker, a better example? If you're young, how can I take where I am right now to to shape my work ethic, my character, my morals, my ideas, my convictions? You know, if you're old, how can I take where I am right now to be a better role model, a better example, a better guide, a better mentor? You know, make every aspect of your life, and we understand that life is good and bad. So make every aspect of your life an opportunity. You know, and some opportunities come with promotions, mm-hmm. but some don't. But that doesn't mean you don't end up being better after it. I completely agree. You know, as you're saying, I was thinking, it's crazy, but you waking up every day is an opportunity. You know, the fact that, um, and I guess, you know, I'll I speak, I speak to the camera this time, but the fact that you can have an impact on anyone's life, you know what I mean? For saying anything that's on your mind at any given moment, you know, the beautiful thing is that you will never know you impacted that person's life. For sure. There, there, there's points where you just don't know because the person didn't decide to let you know. Mm-hmm. The person didn't decide to tell you anything. But you can impact someone's life by basically stating what's on your mind. And or just being consistent. Being Always consistent. being there. Exactly. And it's amazing to me how, in reality... Every single day is an opportunity to make something. So, carpe diem. Seize yes. the day. Yes. And I kind of want to close it there. All right, guys. I actually want to close it there. Um, you know, wait, there's an airplane. So, I don't know if it's going to bother the audio. But for as far as anybody, you know, every single day that you live, you have an opportunity. Every single day that you wake up, you have an opportunity to do something, to be an influence, to give advice, to love to hate, to so whatever. You have the power to control that kind of energy. You know what I mean? So I think it's really up to us, you know what I mean, to start creating those opportunities. The present start. is a present. Yes, ex- I love that. The present is a present, exactly. So let's live in it. Mm-hmm. So, you know, for you guys out there watching right now, um, make today an opportunity for you to show somebody something new, for you to experience something new. Because you don't know the kind of impact you can have. Wow. You know what I mean? Yeah. In people's lives, you know? And one of the things I love about what we do is that we don't know who who's going to listen to this. You get me? It could be a random person who clicks on a certain hashtag mm-hmm. today, rides up on a video, Randomly. just clicks the link yeah. on our bio, listens to a whole podcast and decides, wow, I feel inspired to do something. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. We will never know. But the fact that we have a gift of putting something out is uh, beyond amazing. So. Yeah. And I, honestly, guys, um, I think that's it. Just yeah. carpe diem. Every day, every moment, it's an opportunity. Let's not take it for granted. We are down. I hope you guys are too. Mm-hmm. Like, subscribe, retweet, follow, mm-hmm. comment, all this good stuff. And smash that subscribe button. Thank you for listening.